Welcome everyone and thank you for joining us for our information session for the Advanced Diploma of Building Surveying. TAS TAFE acknowledged the Palawa people as the traditional owners and current custodians of the lands where we work and live. We celebrate the diversity of Aboriginal peoples and their ongoing cultures and connections to the lands, seas, waterways and skies of Lutruwita. We pay our respects to ancestors past, elders present and the Tasmanian Aboriginal community today. For today's presentation, you won't need a camera or a microphone. You'll be able to see the slides and hear the presenter, but we won't be able to hear or see you. To access closed captions, click on the CC icon in the bottom right corner. You're welcome to submit any questions that you have through the Q&A panel and we will make time at the end of our presentation to answer these questions. To ask questions, click on the Q&A icon at the top right hand of your screen. You can enter your name or choose to remain anonymous. The webinar is being recorded and will be published on our website within 24 hours. Building surveying can be an exciting and rewarding career choice. Building surveyors are responsible for ensuring that proposed and existing building work complies with legislative requirements and the National Construction Code. So you may be asking yourself, what does a workday look like for a building surveyor? The role of a building surveyor can involve many tasks, which can be a positive. Not only will you spend time in the office assessing design plans for compliance and producing reports, you will also be required to inspect building work on site as it progresses. A building surveyor's scope of work may also include processing planning and building applications for approval, providing technical advice to clients and other stakeholders, undertaking audit inspections, producing technical reports, identifying non-compliant work and overseeing the rectification of these issues, and issuing certificates for occupancy. As you can tell, the building surveying role can vary a lot and you will be regularly interacting with many people, including homeowners and people in the building industry. Whilst building surveying can be challenging at times, knowing that you are contributing to the safety of a building and the occupants within can be a gratifying experience. Whether you are new to the industry or looking to upskill, this course will provide you with the skills and knowledge required to perform the role professionally and accurately. The Advanced Diploma of Building Surveying is the minimum required for the appointment as a Building Surveyor Level 2 Limited. Once you apply for and obtain a license, you will be able to perform building surveying functions for all classes of buildings up to three storeys and with a maximum floor area of 2,000 square metres. The building industry is currently thriving and there is a high demand for building surveyors across Australia. Undertaking and successfully completing this qualification will open up opportunities for you. Whether that be working in a municipal council, in an existing building surveying firm, or even starting your own business. The qualification also allows for membership to the National Professional Organisation, the Australian Institute of Building Surveyors. This course is also a suitable stepping stone for those who wish to undertake further studies at university, for example, a degree in building surveying. These further studies will allow you to apply for a building surveyor level one license, which is unlimited. TAS TAFE also offers the building surveying skill set, which will be discussed later in this presentation. Before I proceed with the course information, it's important that you are aware that some of the assessments that you'll be working through require inspections of residential and commercial buildings under various stages of construction. In addition, you will need to access specialist reports for buildings in different geographical locations. To facilitate this and to also ensure that work health and safety requirements are met, it is an enrolment requirement that you have access to a mentor that is a building surveyor. Without this, you'll be unable to enrol. Whilst not an entry requirement, please note that in order to complete the course, you will need access to a computer with an internet connection, an email service and Microsoft Office, 
All TAS TAFE students will be provided with a free subscription to Microsoft Office 365 for the duration of their enrollment. Once you have enrolled, instructions will also be provided on how to access the TAS TAFE library resources. This includes access to the National Construction Code and Australian Standards subscriptions. The Advanced Diploma of Building Surveying is currently offered as a two-year full-time course and requires the completion of 22 units of competency. There are 19 core units and three elective units to be completed. The elective units have already been selected. Across the 22 units, there are a total of 101 assessments. The course covers topics such as researching and evaluating construction methods and materials, applying legal and ethical requirements to building surveying functions, and conducting and reporting on initial and final building inspections. The course is self-paced and delivered online through the Clarence campus. All resources and assessments are accessible via our online e-learning platform, Canvas. Please be aware that because this is an online course, it will be your responsibility to use the learning resources, undertake extensive research, and utilize your building surveying mentor as much as possible for support. It is important to understand that the resources provided in each unit are only a starting point, and they do not provide all the answers to the questions in the assessments. Please note that if you have been working in the building surveying industry or have completed study in the past, you may be eligible for recognition of prior learning. The course information guide, which will be discussed shortly, outlines more information on this process. Upon enrolling in this course, you will be granted access to Canvas. This is where you will locate your learning resources, your assessments and other important information. There are several must read documents available on Canvas, which will provide guidance on the course and helpful information around the presentation and preparation of your assessments. These documents are the course information guide, assessment guidelines, study essentials, and report writing. It is important that you read all of these documents before starting any assessments, as the information contained will save you time in the future. The course information guide covers detailed information on the course, including a study path. The study path outlines the order in which the units must be completed. Following this path ensures that you complete the prerequisite units at the appropriate time. Please make yourself familiar with this. It is important to understand that if you have not completed the prerequisite unit, the other units associated with it will not open up in Canvas. If you wish to deviate from the study path, please make sure that you contact your teacher beforehand and seek permission. The study essentials and report writing documents will be discussed later in this presentation. Once you are enrolled and have read through the must read documents, you can start your first unit. Each unit has a very simple entry quiz that you must complete first. If this is not completed, you will not gain entrance into the unit. Once you have finished the quiz, you can access the learning resource, assessments, and any other additional information that may be applicable to the unit. Upon completion of your assessment, you can submit it into Canvas for marking. All marks and feedback will be sent via Canvas. Please be aware that you'll be provided with three attempts to achieve a satisfactory mark. It is recommended that rather than completing all of the assessments for a unit and submitting them together, submit one assessment at a time to allow for feedback to be provided. The feedback you receive may be general guidance and could help with your other assessments. Preparing some draft assessments whilst waiting for feedback is also recommended. Building surveyors work in a highly regulated environment and must carry out their role ethically, accurately, and in accordance with legislative and regulatory requirements. Due to this, the Advanced Diploma of Building Surveying has a strong focus on undertaking appropriate research and how to document your findings, high level technical report writing, and correct referencing techniques. As mentioned before, when preparing your assessment responses, it is important to remember that the learning resources provided for each unit are a starting point only. It is expected that you will undertake further research to improve your understanding of a particular topic. This will vastly improve your knowledge and allow you to summarize your findings in your own words. 
please be aware that copying information directly from websites or using generative software, such as ChatGPT, will not be tolerated and is considered academic misconduct. All students must comply with the TAS TAFE Student Code of Conduct, and more information on this can be found on the TAS TAFE website. If you have not been required to produce a formal report before, it can be seen by some as a daunting task. As mentioned previously, on Canvas you will find our must-read documents, study essentials and report writing. These contain really useful information and tips on how to produce professional reports and how to correctly reference any sources that you may have used for research. Please don't forget to read these before jumping into your assessments. As mentioned previously, prior to your enrolment, you are required to arrange a building surveyor to mentor you whilst you're undertaking the course. These details will need to be recorded on our database, so it is requested that this information is provided as part of your enrolment. In addition to your mentor details, you will need to produce an individual study plan. This plan will outline what time you will be allocating each week for study and will need to demonstrate how many units you intend to complete each year. It is understood that completing all 22 units in the two year period may be challenging for some, However, by taking the time to create a study plan early on, it will greatly assist you in achieving your goals. A copy of your individual study plan is to be provided via email for our records. Our email address is built.engineering at tastafe.tas.edu.au and will be shown at the end of this presentation. The skill set may be appropriate for students that are hoping to apply for a Level 3 Assistant Building Surveyor Licence. The skill set contains nine units, focuses only on residential building work and is offered for a period of one year. Please be aware that in Tasmania, the skill set is not recognised, therefore it does not have a licensing outcome in this state. There are 42 assessments to be completed across the nine units. As per the requirements of the full advanced diploma, the skill set will still require you to have a mentor building surveyor and to produce an individual study plan to demonstrate how you intend to complete your studies. The 2025 fees associated with the building surveyor skill set are currently shown on screen. It is best to confirm these on the TASTAFE website as these may be subject to change. The 2025 academic year will commence on the 17th of February and finish on the 31st of October. If you wish to complete a unit and receive a result prior to the end of the year, you must ensure that you have all applicable assessments submitted for marking by the 31st of October, 2025. The 2025 fees associated with the Advanced Diploma of Building Surveying are currently shown on screen. It is best to confirm these on the TASTAFE website as these may be subject to change. If you choose to withdraw from this course, it is important to be aware of your census dates. These are listed on your course confirmation, which is provided to you after your enrolment. If you do choose to withdraw from the course after your census date, you will be liable for payment, even if you have not completed any assessments. Applications for the Advanced Diploma of Building Surveying and the skill set will open on the 11th of November at 12 p.m. midday. Please visit our website and click on the Apply and Enrol page, which will guide you through the application process. After you have submitted your application, please monitor your email for the outcome or possible further information requests. Study Start is a free four-day mixed mode or online course that students enrolled in any other TASTAFE course can enrol in before their main course starts. Participants of the course learn basic study skills, including time management and interpreting assessments, as well as digital literacy skills relating to using Microsoft 365 and the TASTAFE Learning Management System Canvas. Study Start will be run each day from Monday the 3rd of February 2025 until Thursday 6th of February 2025 at the following campuses, Burnie, Devonport, Allenvale, Campbell Street and Clarence. You will also do some self-directed study in the mixed mode course. Study Start Online will be run across the same dates, but you will not need to come onto campus. 
you'll participate in virtual classes and self-directed study. Past students have said, doing study start softened the impact of day one of my course. It also helped ease their anxiety about being new to study and it helped get a head start in their actual course. Apply now at the TAS TAFE website using the keyword study start in the search bar. If you require help with reading, writing, mathematics, computer skills, study skills or workplace skills, TAS TAFE can assist. Foundation Skills Services can work with you in a group or provide individual tutoring. Please speak with your teacher or call the number on screen if you would like support in any of these particular areas. If you require assistance or support during your time at TAS TAFE, please reach out and seek advice from our support team. We have student counsellors, disability liaison officers and Aboriginal support officers based in each region. Our support team offer a range of student services, including advice about financial assistance, counselling, disability support and pathway planning. Please call the number on screen to make an appointment or visit the student support section on our website. Thank you for joining our presentation today and we hope that it provided you with some valuable information on the building surveying courses offered at TAS TAFE. Hi everybody, thanks for joining. Uh, so just to reiterate, if you have any questions, um, there's a Q&A uh, button up in the top right hand corner. Uh, feel free to put any questions that you might have. Um, uh, my name's Dylan Jeffs, uh, I'm one of the teachers here uh, and I'm with Bruce Menzi as well um, and we'll be happy to, uh, to answer any questions you might have this afternoon. There's a, there's a question, yeah, question through here, Bruce. Do you want me to put that through? Yeah, I think so. Hi, people. We'll get Dylan to put it through so we can actually see it. Okay, so that's that should be published now. Thanks, people. The, the important thing there, I hope you can all see that question. Jim, it's great that you're a carpenter and printer certificate through. The important thing there, yes, you will still need a mentor who's a qualified building surveyor. No, he cannot be a builder. If that's all he's got, I'm sorry to tell you, but no, you can't. Um, it's very, very important to have a mentor because you should be able to work your way through some other legal requirements as well, which which your builder will probably not know. Um, so it's really important. Yeah, accessing accessing building sites is really only one part um, of of the uh, the mentor aspect. So uh, yeah, to to I guess echo what Bruce was saying is um, yeah, the building surveyor uh, mentor is um is somebody that should be able to provide that extra support in relation to uh the technical aspects of building surveying um it can be uh a bit of a um uh, a challenge to study um a self-paced course online um uh, you might feel a little isolated in relation to that so having uh, support outside of uh, the teachers here uh, is is really beneficial to the students. Thanks. Okay. The other the other thing there, people, just very quickly, is uh, the important thing too is because of this course, you are going to write a lot of reports, um, and building surveyors should be able to let you understand how they are written. Um, and the, as, as we said in the presentation, they've got to be done correctly. Um, and that is one of the major parts of, of the course. 
So it's really important for a building surveyor to be part of that. Okay, I've got quite a few questions coming through, Bruce. So I'm just going to let them through one at a time. I think that's probably the easiest, uh, the easiest way. Um, so just in relation to, um, uh, I guess, teacher being allocated, um, there, there are currently uh, sort of three teachers um, uh, teaching the the building surveying course at the moment. Uh, we will be here uh, to answer any questions and uh, and try and provide some direction and su uh, support with respect to your studies. Um, as far as the building surveying mentor um, goes, what their role is, one, it is to uh, provide that, um, I guess, additional support um, in addition to what we can provide, uh, but accessing um, uh, buildings under different stages of construction, uh, as Bruce said, support with respect to report writing and uh, and also just general um, guidance with respect to the National Construction Code, current, uh, current requirements out in the industry as well. Um, so whilst we will be able to provide some support, uh, we are a little limited, I guess, with the amount of information we can provide uh, because we can't really give you the answers to the assessments, uh, but as part of that um, uh, additional support from the mentor, uh, that should be able to uh, assist in gelling all that information together. Anything you'd like to add, Bruce? No, I think he's fine. I, the, the, the important thing there, just remember, yeah, you're going to be working on your own a fair bit. So uh, it's important to, to actually now start to understand that. Um, and like Dylan said, we hit our, answer some of your questions, but we, we, we can't answer all, the, all of them because you've got to prove that you understand them. I think that's the important bit. Okay, I'm basically just going through these questions from, from top to bottom, so I apologise if I'm uh, not doing them in the order that they came through, but I will try and get through all of them today. Um, uh, the building surveying skill set. Uh, so essentially, um, uh, the skill set is a, uh, a, a reduced uh, amount of units uh, that can be completed. So there are nine units in the building surveying skill set, and that um, is essentially a, a separate course, uh, but it focuses uh, solely on residential, uh, residential building work. Now, uh, whilst that course is available to, to everybody, um, the uh, the restriction around that if you are uh, somebody that is located in Tasmania is that the regulatory body here does not recognise um, uh, that course as a, a, I guess a licensed um, a licensed course as far as being able to go out and practice. Uh, so if you were to if you were Tasmanian and you uh, completed the skill set here, you wouldn't be able to go out and get your own building surveying license with that qualification. You would need to complete the the full advanced diploma qualification. Um, uh, the skill set is uh, is obviously highly beneficial to to uh, students that are outside of Tasmania. Um, it is possible to gain a license to undertake inspections of residential buildings uh, on on the mainland. Um, so uh, we offer, uh, I guess, those options um, uh, to try and uh, cater for our students across Australia. I suppose, that, sorry, Dylan, thing there, people, just like Dylan said, just remember a skill set is only for residential buildings. It's for nothing else. Um, by all means, you can, I probably shouldn't say this, but by all means, you can study it. Uh, but if you're from Tasmania, uh, you then would have to transfer over to, like Dylan said, to advanced diploma, no matter what. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Now, as I said, we will just go one at a time. Is the Diploma of Building Surveying available in WA for face-to-face -face study? Um, okay, so uh, what we're offering uh, at, at TAS TAFE here 
is uh, is online self-paced um, uh, an online self-paced course. Uh, so there is no face-to-face uh, -face component uh, per se. However, we are um, intending to hold some uh, support uh, support studios. Uh, we're trying to work out how we're going to schedule those in uh, next year, uh, but it is certainly our intention to run something every four to six weeks um, for students just to drop in uh, and uh, we can try and assist with questions um, and, and just to provide, I guess, a little bit of support because, you know, as I said before, it can feel a little isolating for some uh, when they're studying um, essentially on their own. Uh, so hopefully adding those support studios in next year will um, uh, make things a little bit easier, uh, but that doesn't necessarily limit uh, your ability to write in uh, or contact us via phone if you have questions um, uh, throughout the duration of your uh, of your course. Um, so, uh, yeah, I certainly don't want to give the impression that uh, those support studios are the only times you're going to be able to ask questions. We we will certainly be available at other times. Um, now, the other part of that question uh, is, is the advanced diploma recognised in, in WA? Uh, yes, yes it is. If you need any more information, you're better off contacting WA Licensing Board. Um, I can't remember exactly what they call them now, um, but for them, you're better off asking them um, what's their requirements because they do change a little bit in each state. Just a little bit. Okay. I suppose while he's bringing that up, the important thing also, people, just remember, yes, the advanced diploma from TAS TAFE is recognised Australia-wide. So it doesn't matter where you go, it will be recognised. I think that's important. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Okay, uh, next question there, Bruce. Um, can I mentor with a certifier um, licensed in, in Queensland? I'm assuming um, it's, yeah, uh, without scrolling through the remainder of the questions, I'm making the assumption that you may not be located in Queensland, um, but either way, uh, whether you're located there or not, then that shouldn't be a problem. They don't have to be a local uh, building surveyor. Um, it is preferable that they are uh, current uh, and licensed and, and sort of working in the industry, I guess, um, uh, just to ensure that you can um, meet uh, I guess those expectations of, of what the mentor is hoping to achieve, but um, there's there's certainly no limitation there um, from our perspective. No. Just just on that, people, if if you have got someone like that, just remember you might have to go on. You will have to go on site. I shouldn't say might. You will have to go on site. Now, if that mentor is from another state, they might not be able to help you get on site when you need it. So it's really important to think about. Um, who you're going to actually have as a mentor. Okay. Right. So the building surveying uh, under the study loan. Um, so, uh, okay. <laughs> uh, essentially, um, from what I from what I understand, um, it, it is possible. But as far as that information goes, uh, because Bruce and I are not necessarily experts in relation to, I guess, the fees um, uh, and how uh, the payment, uh, I guess, side of things is is processed. Uh, the best advice that I can give is really to contact our. Uh, our client services uh, uh, area um, and you can ask a lot of those questions I guess through um, the the pre-enrollment uh, process. Uh, I apologize that I can't give you any any real specifics in relation to that today uh, but I would uh, much prefer to refer you to uh, uh, one of the experts rather than give you some misleading information that's all. Um, okay um now another good question 
Okay, yes, the, the course is for, uh, it is a, a two year enrollment. Uh, is there any way to prolong, prolong that period? Um, okay, uh, yes, uh, fully understand the, uh, the difficulties of studying uh, essentially a full-time course whilst working full-time. Uh, we, um, uh, we completely understand that uh, and uh, from, uh, from our side, uh, the, the best way to say, uh, to answer that would be uh, to say, yes, there is potentially some flexibility with respect to the duration of the course. However, any uh, consideration giving, given to uh, additional time will be based on, uh, on progress uh, and uh, I guess consistent progress at that. So uh, if we can see that a student is uh, continu continuously working, uh, maintaining communication with us and, and is demonstrating that they are uh, doing what they can to progress through the course, then uh, we could certainly have some discussions around that. Um, it certainly goes back to uh, what we mentioned earlier with respect to this, uh, the individual study plans. Um, so uh, if, uh, if you do decide to enrol in the course, uh, we will, as part of that enrolment process, we will be making contact with uh, with everybody who is uh, going through that process, uh, and we'll be discussing the individual study plans uh, at that point. Uh, and essentially, it's an opportunity for uh, you to demonstrate to us how you intend to uh, complete the course. You may um, uh, look at it for the first and say, right, my intention is to complete you know, seven units over the course of the year. Uh, and uh, we will, uh, well, our, our intention is to try and work with uh, each and every, every student to be able to achieve uh, that outcome. Uh, I know I've gone a bit of a long way around to answering your question, uh, but the short answer is yes, there is the possibility of some additional time, uh, as long as we can see that there is progress being made, uh, but that is something we will be discussing with, uh, with students individually as, uh, as the course uh, progresses. Just to interrupt there, people, um, just remember also, one of the things about the study path is it's flexible. So you, you know, you might do it now and three months down the track, you realize, oh, it's not quite right. I need to change it. And that's what it's all about. And so you can actually a judge of what you're going to study and how long you're going to be. And that would make things life a lot easier for both of us. Um, all right, so yes, like Dylan said, yes, there is a chance to do that as long as we can see that you are studying and you're working through each unit. Good. Okay. Publish that one. Okay, with respects to uh, attempts for assessments, uh, you, I guess you're partially correct there. There are three attempts uh, for each of the assessments. Um, now, if, uh, uh, if you are uh, at that point where you have submitted uh, three times uh, and in, uh, are not at a point of receiving a, uh, a competent result in that unit, um, uh, and uh, we are, I guess, in a position where we need to issue a, uh, an NP result, um, uh, essentially the process is, um, that a student may need to re-enroll in that unit uh, and there would be a, a fee associated with that. They wouldn't be required to re-enroll in the entire course. Uh, however, um, yeah, yes, yeah, it would be uh, based on the, uh, the discretion and the decision of the, of the assessor uh, who's undertaking um, the review of that particular unit. Um, now, the other interesting thing there, people, is, is let me put it this way. If you were doing a unit and I was marking that unit and you had three attempts and you had one little thing wrong, then I will most probably ring you up or I would say, 
all right, I need you to fix this um, and then everything will be okay. Um, so okay. don't get too carried away because by the time you get to the third attempt, you've already had two um, answers or help from the teacher helping you get through that. Um, so it's, it's not very often that we would put an NP to a person's mark unless they're really um, off the ball, I suppose. Um, and but we'll try and help you through as much as we can. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, there's, uh, you know, we will be obviously giving feedback um, uh, in an effort to uh, point you in the right direction. Um, OK, I've got the same question a few times in there. So, um, uh, OK, so uh, not having experience in building surveying. Um, uh, yes, uh, you you are eligible to uh, to apply and uh, enroll in the course, uh, but yes, you will need to uh, have a building surveying mentor in order to uh, to get through the enrolment process. As far as us locating a mentor um, for students, uh, no, uh, we don't do that. Um, it will be it will definitely be up to the student to to find somebody. Um, as we alluded to before, it doesn't necessarily need to be a building surveyor in the state that you're located. However, it would be preferred if uh, if they were located where you are. It will just make life a, a lot easier as you progress to some of the later units in the course uh, with respect to uh, the, the inspections and so forth. Just to work there a little, little bit, people, is if you finding it hard to find a building space, yeah, please, you need to be able to ring up a few few of the um, businesses and have a talk to them. I know many students have done that and and they've actually got a mentor through that. They might ask you, what does a mentor do? Um, and you need to be able to say to them, yeah, you're there to help them through their assignments, but at the same time, to help them on site, to help them understand the principles of what a building surveyor is doing for that particular unit. Um, all right, so yeah, they do have a little bit of uh, work to do for you, but they're not there for every five minutes for you to talk to them. Um, otherwise, they will, you know, probably get pretty uptight about that, I'd say. Um, but yeah, it's important to have a mentor. Yeah, yeah, and I think that that sort of leads into uh, the next question or, or, or the next part of that question that uh, that I've just thrown through there. Um, yes, if you if you're not um, uh, if if you don't know anybody personally in in the industry, um, the uh, the best thing to do would be to I guess outline what um, what the expectations are. Uh, with respect to uh, being a mentor. Uh, as Bruce said, um, you know, there may be some assistance from an assessment point of view. Uh, uh, however, primarily the, you know, the expectation would be you would contact uh, us with, with questions in the first instance. Um, but ultimately, as you progress through the course, uh, you will encounter units where you will need to undertake inspections. So uh, that is sort of where their involvement is going to pick up a little bit. Uh, you may need to uh, accompany them uh, on site uh, whilst they undertake uh, some inspections at some point uh, in the future. Certainly not for the first couple of uh, units in the course, um, but I think just being as transparent as possible uh, and I think if you um, do choose to uh, progress um, and uh, choose to enrol in the course uh, and you'd like some more information with respect to the roles and responsibility of the mentor, then we could potentially put something together, uh, just a brief summary uh, of, of what uh, our expectations are, and that might be able to provide a little bit of assistance when you're out trying to find somebody uh, in the industry to uh, to give you um, some help along the way. Uh, okay. just, just, on, just on that, people, we've had students this year who, who didn't know anybody, and they rang a few of the businesses up, um, and they got mentors, um, and a couple of them I've spoken to, um, the mentors even rang me and talked to me about it. Um, so it, it does happen and, and uh, don't be scared off just because you don't know of anybody. Okay. 
Okay. Do have one more there, Bruce. Hopefully that's come through for you. We might just need a little bit more clarification with respect to that uh, that last question. The MVR approved um, in New South Wales. Um, feel free to put something through if you can give us a little bit more info. Um, As, like I said before, people, this course is recognised Australia-wide, um, but it is always good to look at your um, licensing body within each state, if that's where you're from, um, and ask them the, some questions about it, um, by all means. Um, but like I said, we, it's, it's nationally accredited. It works our way through. We have to be as well as a body, so... Um, it's 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 worth the while if you're thinking about it. I, I suppose while we're talking about that, the important thing for me is to remind each of you, or just to make sure you understand, and I'm sure you do. It is a lot of it is a big ask. Are we, are we truthful? With you? It is a big ask. It does mean you're going to be tired, and you're going to come home from work tired, and and you all of a sudden you're going to say, well, I've got to work for another four hours studying. Um, it 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 is a big ask, but um, it's it's if that's what's needed, um, and we can't do any more than two years at the moment. So um, we understand that, as Dylan said before. So uh, just as long as you're aware of that, and as long as you're aware, you know, um, don't expect though to you know, do one unit or one assignment, and all of a sudden wait days for it to come back because you've got to wait at least two or three weeks before your assignment comes back. Um, and we expect you to be working on other, another unit at the same time. So you're working on two units, you have one sent in and next one you're working on it. And and if, like Dylan said before, if you actually send in three or four assignments at once, one might not be right. So the first few, first few I would recommend only sending in one at a time um, and see what sort of reaction um, you get. Um, and then it becomes a lot easier for you to know what's expected of you with your assignments. Yeah, yeah. All right. I haven't got any other questions here, Bruce, so. Um, OK. Now, uh, I will just, um, I guess, repeat one or two important things before before we head off. Um, so the uh, the 11th of November, uh, is the date that uh, enrolments open. Uh, so visit the TAS TAFE website um, and click on the uh, on the button there uh, and that will guide you through the process. Uh, in addition, uh, I think um, I'm just keeping an eye on the on the questions here. Yep, no, nothing, nothing new coming through, Bruce. So uh, in addition, if there are any other questions um, uh, that you think of after the presentation, uh, certainly feel free to uh, email in. Uh, and I'll just reiterate that our email address is built.engineering at tastafe.tas.edu.au. All right. Good. Thank you everyone for uh, for attending this afternoon. Thanks people.